Hi, good evening. This is SMK again, all the way from Mayetten, Bokim Christian Center. Uh, we are continuing with our topic, the unfolding events towards rapture and the tribulation. And I want to believe that now a lot of us are catching a glimpse of what will be happening and what is happening and what will culminate into a fully blown event towards the revelation of the Antichrist. And I, I believe that as a Christian you are becoming excited and you are moved to even pray more. You are moved to seek the Lord's face. You are moved to live right because it is important that we watch and pray. And our watching is in three levels. We, we watch our minds that we do not stray away and sin by becoming worldly in our thinking and causing ourselves to be enemies of God. And we watch by taking care of our eyes because the Bible says, Lord, the righteous man vexed his soul by seeing the evil, the sinfulness that was being done and performed daily in Sodom and Gomorrah. So we need to watch our eyes that what we see does not end up destroying our purity and plunging us into diverse passions which will cause us our destiny. So our eyes needs to remain pure and not to behold evil. As Job would say and say, I have made a covenant with my eyes that I should not lastly look at a woman. So our eyes needs to be brebbled, our eyes needs to be pure and be guarded that we do not act as instruments of evil by having eyes of a serpent whilst we profess to be children of God. Are you hearing me here? And we need to guard our hearts. For the Bible says, out of our hearts come the issues of life. So when we are told to watch and pray, we watch our hearts, that our hearts should not become instruments of iniquity where iniquity is being harbored and as David would say if I regard iniquity in my heart then the Lord won't hear me now we need we need to 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 guard our hearts so that iniquity should not reside in our hearts because our hearts needs to house God, our hearts need to embrace his will and purpose. Our hearts need to receive the word of God. And we need to constantly and always allow the word of God to resonate within our hearts so that we are able to speak like David of old and say, I have hidden your word inside my heart that I should not sin against you. Hallelujah. You, you, you know, as, as, as the Bible would ask a, and pose a, a question and say unto us, how can a young person cleanse their way and keep themselves pure? And it also gives an answer, but adhering to the purity of the word of God. 
Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Soldiers, uh, let's get into the cross of the matter. And today we are talking, we are going to highlight and talk about the the events the events that we must be expecting you know towards rapture and towards tribulation the events that we must expect to see <clears throat> and we shall be getting our scripture reading from the book of revelation chapter 4 and reading verse one, which is one of the key verses in this portion of scripture, the book of Revelation. And it reads thus from my Bible. After these things, I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet underline that was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. Come up here, underline that, and I will show you things which must take place after this. Now, I want us to divide this portion of scripture into four levels. The first level is you need to, my goodness me, you need to understand that this is dealing with things that have taken place after these things. My goodness me, that's the first thing that we're going to talk about after these things, which things, and we will be bringing an answer to that. And set secondly an open door that remained standing my goodness me and 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 the revelator john saw this open door number three the trumpet that spoke hallelujah the trumpet that spoke and number four the summoning come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. God bless our hearts as we listen and circumcise our ears as we hear the teaching tonight and I believe we will be blessed. Now as I've said number one let's look at these things after these things which things now you will you will you will recall that in chapter 1 John is summoned by the spirit and brought into a heavenly scenario where a revelation is unfolding right before his eyes though we should know that his natural eyes were gushed out and he was banished being a the island of patmos for the sake of the gospel but even though his natural eyes were gushed out the spiritual eyes were still much vibrant and he was able to see the revelations of glory because when you are to see the things of god you don't need your natural eyes you need the eyes of the spirit because you can have your eyes whilst still the spirit of the Lord refers to you as the blind because you are unable to tap into the spiritual realm and begin to see things as God reveals them to mankind. After these things, which are the things here? The things of the revealed glorified Christ. Uh, my goodness me, we, we need to understand this because when we understand the interpretation of the glorified Christ, then we will know the stance of the church. 
Hallelujah. Now, 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 now Jesus in Revelation chapter 1 is not revealed as a lamb who is supposed to die for the sins of men, but he is revealed as a glorified Christ who has already conquered, who holds the keys of the abyss and the keys of heaven. It's is the Christ who walks in the midst of the candlesticks, which which refers to the seven churches. Are you are you with me? This is the Christ who has the seven spirit in his hands. Are you here? The Christ of God, the fully anointed man of God, the, the man Christ Jesus, who is the only mediator between man and God. He has the seven spirit in his hand and he walks in the midst of the candlesticks. You, 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 you must understand that. Read something there. He has the seven spirit in his hand, which are the seven spirits of God. And if you want to know this kind of, of spirit, it's the same spirit, but my goodness me, labeled according to his fun function in the seven ways in which he functions. And you will get that in the book of, in the book of Isaiah chapter 9. Uh, are you with me here? The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of might, the spirit of righteousness, the spirit of truth. My, my goodness me, the spirit of the father, the, the spirit of rulership. So, so you will find this is tabulated there. My goodness me, you don't need to pray for a revelation because it is already written. So we need to know these things. Now, which means if he holds the spirit in his hand and he was he is walking in the midst of the candlestick, this simply means Jesus is releasing the power of revival upon his church. So that tells us that in his revelation in chapter 1, Jesus is revealed to a church that is fallen, to a church that is raped, robbed, and, 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 and fallen short of the glory. And he's walking in the midst so that he brings the revival. And that's what we call the last revival. So this also points out that the last revival, it won't be much of a revival that reaches out to the people in the world, but it will be a revival that stirs up the church so that the church gets ready for the takeoff. <coughs> Are you are you with me? And that is and how can we vali we, we 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 validate this? Right in his talk, his ministry, the revival, the messages to the seven churches in 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 the Bible, Jesus is pinpointing. My goodness me, the 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 image which the church is portraying, and number two, Jesus portrays the strength. Of, of of the church and he portrays the real stains the real power or the real condition stature of that particular church and afterwards he admonishes the church the things that needs to be done for the church to be where god wants her to be and in conclusion to every church he says these words let him who has ears hear what the spirit is saying to the churches so in other words the last revival the last great revival will be a revival for the church even though the world will be influenced but it will be at a minimal level but the the focus will be much on the church and 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 you you will be asking but why the church because these people know the lord the truth of the matter is the people in the church currently do not know who christ is they do not know who god is that is why it is easy for them to follow men that is why it is easy for them to be deceived that is why it is easy for them to fall short out of my, my goodness of church and being transferred like weeds from one church to another uh, are you are you hearing me here because they are seeking to find a place where christ is portrayed my goodness me are you are you hearing me here so the people who are in the church currently do not know christ that's the fact that it's 
truth my goodness me they may know the procedures of their churches they may they may know the constitutions of their churches they may know how they operate the worship songs they may even get familiar to the kind of preachings that are supposed to be brought in which are more of a motivation than than a life transforming mess, message from the lord my, my goodness me which are more of of men made declarations and that is why the Lord causes these things not to be fulfilled because these are not prophetic declarations. They are not prophetic utterances that come from the Holy Spirit. They are wishful declarations from people who are in leadership and who are serving God, desiring to see people to be at a certain level. My goodness me, that is not lying. Don't, don't mix that with prophet lying. Declarations. It's just that we need to be honest enough and tell the people of the Lord when we are declaring things out of the desires of our own hearts of things that we want to see manifesting in the lives of the people we lead yet at the same time when it is the Holy Spirit speaking then we need to tell the people that this is the Spirit saying this is how things are going to to unfold as Paul would say as he writes to the churches and he would say more especially when he writes to the church in Corinth he would say the Lord says this and he will go on as you continue with the story and the same Paul would be saying this is not the Lord but I because I have the spirit I as a leader who is declaring these things my goodness me so we, we must be able to sift in between the declarations of a leader and the utterances of the Holy Spirit and we are able to see that by checking the scriptures by discerning the kind of spirit that is up in operating operation because it is not only the demonic spirit that we must pick up when we descend. We must also discern that it is the human spirit that it's speaking so that we do not take the word of man to be at par and equal to the word of Christ. Are we hearing here? My, my goodness me, my goodness me. The people today do not know Christ. And that is why it is important that each and every church in our days desire and pray and cry unto the Lord for the restoration of the person of Jesus Christ in his church that the people should begin to know Jesus for who he is Christ the hope of glory our kinsman redeemer he's walking in the midst of the candlestick that speaks of revival and again in chapter 1, after these things, the, my goodness me, the Bible speaks of Jesus. Actually, Jesus speaks of himself as the Alpha and the Omega. In other words, the beginning and the end. Why? Because he is the beginning and he will, he, he will end, my goodness me, everything as he, be, he, he began it. And he will be found at the end end as the ultimate end of the conclusion of things the a and the z that is christ and mind you let's 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 speak about this jesus for the first time remember when he arose from the dead and he appeared before the the disciples and giving them the great commission he speaks of himself given authority in heaven and on earth but he mentions nothing about hell but this time in revelation chapter one he says i'm the one who was dead but i'm alive and i hold the keys of the abyss and the keys of life now, now you should note that after these things in other words jesus is no longer coming as a savior of mankind but he's coming as the judge of mankind hence he speaks of the abyss, the key of the abyss. In other words, it is not the devil who will be throwing people into hell. It is Christ who will be throwing people into hell together with the devil, the people who refused to worship and follow Christ whilst they were still here. 
It is time, soldiers, as you are listening, that you stir up your family members, your children, your hubby, your 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 your, your wife, your children, your nif your nephews, your nieces, your cousins, everyone who is part of you. It is about time you warn them of the danger that it's coming because judgment is just as our doorsteps as john would pull would put it the aches has already been put on the roots of the tree my goodness me are you hearing me so warn the people that it is time to make a decision death is not a dry clean of sin nor a translating my, my goodness me elevator that elevates you to god by simply dying you need to make a decision whilst you're still down here and walk according to the decision that you have made and that's what we call Christianity are you hearing me here fine let us let us go on after these things and we go to chapter 2 and chapter 3 after which things the revival of the churches are you with me here and remember the church needs revival because the greater church is fallen and lukewarm my goodness me having a reputation of being alive yet dead are you hearing me having a reputation of being able to see yet blind are you hearing me that is why it is important that we be not people who run after miracles and who run after charisma but we should be people of character are you hearing me my goodness me character should be the the thing because a gift can be possessed by a child a gift can be possessed even by people who still need deliverance in certain areas of their lives a gift can be possessed by infants because being gifted does not mean you are matured being gifted does not mean you know god and you have arrived it simply means god has has apportioned you my goodness me a portion by which he can be manifested in your life my goodness me but you still need to grow to a level of knowing god and walking in a relationship that is intimate with christ are you hearing me that is why the revival will be focusing on the church so that he who stand by the door and knocking should hear your your yes yes lord yes lord yes lord your yes my goodness me it will allow the lord to come in and dine with you the dining is the triggering factor of the revival are you with me here oh my goodness me and number two the bible the bible the bible the bible speaks of an open door now in other words you must understand remember chapter 3 closes on jesus bringing the revel the revival to people who are hungry for it hence he says i'm standing by the door and knocking and he who hears the call should open up so in other words this time it will be not like the first time when he came and he was able to say lord forgive them because they don't know what they are doing this time it will be a choice he will be saying behold today i put matter of death and life before you choose you choose life you live you choose death you die and hence he's standing by the door and knocking and he who opens up then the lord will be able to come in and he dwells with them and he dines with them and he takes them to another level of glory so an open door is saying to us there is a transition now my goodness me that there is a door that has been shut and another door has been open that talks of the church age being closed and another age beginning 
in the absence of the church in the world my goodness me are you hearing me in other words these things will not be ushered by the devil but it will be heaven who orchestrate even the happenings even after the church is gone now why am i saying this i want people to understand who are listening and who will continue to listen on this that even during the times of tribulation, even the times of the Antichrist are heavenly orchestrated, my goodness me, because of the sinfulness and the rebellion of people. David says in one of the Psalms, to the, to the, to the rebellious, the Lord shows him to be shrewd. My goodness me, in other ways, when you rebel against God's order and will, he's got a tendency of handing you over to your wishful thinking. And we also find that in the book of Romans chapter <laughs> 2, the Bible says, because of their sinful desires and their rebellion, then God handed them over to their lust, that they started lusting after one another. Yeah, and, and, and this is very clear. It says, women begin to to, to, to lust after one another and men, my goodness me, begin to lust one to lust after one another. My goodness me, because they've been handed over by God because of their rebellion and insolence against God's order and teaching. Are you hearing me here? So in other ways, and you can find also a scripture, Solomon says in one of the Proverbs, if a person is constantly rebuked in order to be corrected and they remain adamant and refuse to change, one day they will be crushed and never recover. So in other ways, the insolence and the rebellion which people are, are showing these days and they are hard their hardening of their hearts and their closing of their minds. It is actually working against them because they will think that God approves of what they are doing when actually he has handed them over so that even the day when he judges, he will judge them ultimately because of their sinning and rebellion. So a door is opened, my goodness me, a beginning of a new era. Underline that, a beginning of a new era, a beginning of a new season, a beginning of a, a beginning of new events as they unfold. Are you hearing me here? My goodness me, my goodness me. Yes, 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 yes. Now, now, these are the things that you need to mark as we close and we will continue next week not to keep you. No, my goodness me, hey, underline this, that the build up towards rapture, this is what will happen. Israel must blossom as the fig tree. What does that mean? It simply means when Israel begins to be revived as a nation that is recognized globally, my goodness me, then you must know that the time of the church is at hand. Why? Be Cause when Israel is revived, the focus will no longer be upon the church, but the focus will shift towards Israel. That's why the Bible speaks of a fig tree blossoming. My goodness me, are you hearing me? And we've just seen that happening. The, the President Donald Trump, my goodness me, declaring Jerusalem as the capital of the Jews. Don't take that lightly. That is a sign and a symbol of Israel blossoming as a fig tree my goodness me and globally the the, the, the focus will shift towards there as to what will unfold thereafter are you hearing me here number number two the hatred my goodness me that will be a highlighting factor hatred against the church and you have seen that you see this on social media you see that when people are, are speaking my goodness me even your own family you know some of them are, are my, my goodness me they they, they 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 hate the church with 
passion. Are you hearing me? In the same way the brothers of Joseph hated him for his dream and for him being loved. Are you hearing me? My goodness me. So hatred against the church is a signaling event that rapture is about to happen. Why should the church be hated? The church has become a friend of the world and that is why the church has been hemmed in and the strength of the church has become weak because the church has become friend of the world and that is why they cannot clearly hear God when he speak and they cannot stand as a light to the world and as a salt to the world because they have mingled with the world and the world has hemmed them in. In other words, what is reflected by the church today is more of the world more than what Christ needs to see in his own church. If Christ is the head of the church, then the body must reflect and resemble the head. But we are not doing that because we are friends with the world. My goodness me, the people whom God is raising join hands with the politicians because they want political favors. Are you hearing me? And, and the people whom God is raising as prophets, they are afraid to confront what the people who are in authority are doing. They are afraid to confront what people who call themselves men and women of God are doing and saying. My goodness me, why? Because they don't want to be found at loggerheads with the people who seem to be famous and glorious my goodness me but god is raising a caliber of prophets my goodness me who are wild at heart and who are not tamed because my goodness me the thing that we call the holy spirit actually in our churches these days and our lives it's a domesticated dove my goodness me it looks like the Holy Spirit. It belongs to the family of the Spirit, but it is not the Holy Spirit of the Bible. It's not the Holy Spirit of the heavens because the Holy Spirit of the heavens is sensitive, fearless, my goodness me, and points towards Christ. But the domesticated dove points to the owners, points to individuals. Are you hearing me here? And that is why the people and their images are competing with the person of Christ in the church because that which they possess and they use to prophesy and to preach is not the Holy Spirit but a domesticated dove. Are you hearing me here? My goodness me. But the time has come for the genuine real Holy Spirit to return to his people as he's been knocking, standing by the doors, my goodness me, and a caliber of people who are fearless and who are God-fearing and who are bold as a lion in the thicket, strengthful as a wild ox in the wild, my goodness me, are rising up. My goodness me, I'm not talking about people who are arrogant, who cannot honor even seniors here, but I'm talking people who are full of res respect but yet able to speak the truth. You know, I'm talking about the kind of Nathan uh, prophets. Even when he confronted David after his sin, he approached him well, but he spoke the truth. Are you hearing me? I'm talking about the, my, my, my goodness me, the, 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 the Micaiah kind of prophets. My goodness me, even though the, the king summoned him, he, he respected the king, but spoke the truth. These are the kinds of prophets that the Lord is bringing forth. My goodness me, the kind of Deborah kind of prophets. My goodness me, even though, my goodness me, the... the the, the, the soldiers and the generals elevated her to be the mother of the nation, yet she still humbled herself. Are you hearing me? And that is something that is missing in today's people. They are so pompous, they are so proud to such an extent that it stinks, it smells before God. Remember, Pride comes before a fall, and pride is the reason why the devil could not, be, my goodness, be given a chance to repent. Pride is the thing that caused him to desire to be equal to God, and the pride is subtly introduced amongst our people and destroying our people.
Hallelujah. Still be there. So you too.